my soccer universe. I still have the glare on, but what can you do? Um, I wanted to uh, make a video on the games I watched Friday, Saturday already yesterday, but I was just way too busy. And I tried to get the Premier League jersey review finished, which I did. You will get the fourth part today. Um, not sure when the next league jersey review will hit. Um, I hope by Thursday. And I said yesterday, yeah, I was thinking about uh, doing Serie A next, but I honestly probably I'll do the Bundesliga still. Uh, First, just for the simple reason, it's a little bit less to talk about. And for Serie A, I'm waiting for um, at least one away jersey, which is the one of Parma. That I, I am personally quite curious uh, to see. So uh, that's that. But uh, let's talk. And um, I'm gonna do my uh, weekly review of. Uh, all the league action that, that was going on, well, I'm gonna do this this evening. Um, so you'll get it tomorrow. Uh, also because there is a Monday night game to be played. So I uh, gotta take care of that too. Um, so for that reason I'm only gonna talk now about the games that I saw, what were my thoughts and you know, just a little bit different. This is always the personal one. That's why I can do it in the car because I don't need to do. Um, I don't need to have any special uh, props or pop-ups or something like that. Well, I decided to start my soccer watching weekend, and again, it was more uh, a lot like last weekend where I'm watching, but I'm mostly doing things uh, while watching. I honestly didn't really watch. A game attentively. So I started on Friday um, with watching Borussia Dortmund against Köln uh, for the simple reason that now I can see the Friday Bundesliga games and I'm not a huge Bundesliga fan but if the Friday game is a nice one and for me this was a nice one uh, I really wish there was a Bundesliga where Köln is a regular like uh, where let's say bad example because they were really bad let's in yeah, let's say you know like Schalke that is every season there of Frankfurt who also were kind of recently from I think they were down for a while anyway you know uh, just it they are one of those teams that just should be in the Bundesliga every single season um, at the moment they're not and you know they can be good and then suddenly they fall off again Leverkusen, that would be probably the most because Leverkusen is more or less a suburb of Cologne. Cologne. So yeah, uh, the game was pretty open. I mean, uh, Dortmund controlled maybe possession, but especially towards the latter uh, part of the first half, Cologne was putting a lot of pressure and giving a big fight to Dortmund. And they actually took a rather, I would say, even deserved lead at that point. Then the second half, it goes how it often goes in these cases that, you know, um, they're trying to, Dortmund tries to get the equalizer and Köln tries to take, uh, uh, hang on. And yeah, it's in the last 15 minutes. Uh, some nice, really nice goal scored. Um, where Dortmund gets the equalizer or makes there after, turns the game around, I think it was 85th minute. They make it 3-1, but it was a really enjoyable game, absolutely. And then uh, Saturday, I did not see it, I just because I really had a lot to do, so my father even invited me. Uh, it was the big game between Rapid and Lusk in Austria. Uh, that was actually what dominated the weekend for me. And there's a lot of bad blood going on between those teams, uh, it's mainly on the executive level. Well, this bad blood mostly stems from the fact that, you know, our president is calling Rapid out that, you know, they are the biggest team in Austria. Uh, when you think about fans, uh, support, and, you know, generally media uh, attention. 
and he's calling them out on a regular basis that they're only thinking about themselves, that they are whining too much um, and that they're not thinking about a healthy Bundesliga, they're only thinking about themselves and they, they, he calls them out when, you know, since Lask is now more successful than Rapid for, let's say, two seasons. Uh, he calls out yeah, that you can do it even with smaller means, you can have bigger success than Rapid, who has the second uh, biggest budget in the league, blah, 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 blah. Um, needless to say that also um, having uh, an away game in, at Rapid in the 14th district, right at the edge of town, Hütteldorf, uh, is always, I mean, it's always a sight to behold because there are many fans there, but the referees typically are in favor of Rapid. And it's to the point that when uh, they might for a game not, that there's such a media storm uh, afterwards that in the next game they surely get a good ref. They surely get a good refereeing for their uh, purposes. So, and our president is calling them out. And then there was the additional added um, fire that. And I have to say, I, from a Lusk point of view, it was a little bit stupid to do it, especially that late, um, since Club Rouge is postponing their game, uh, or the league postponed their game, in order to better prepare for uh, the return leg against Lusk, played this Wednesday. Um, he asked the Bundesliga, can we postpone our game against Rapid 2? Well, Rapid needs to kind of agree to that, and of course they did not. And yes, they spun it uh, against Rapid, especially the president, but I think our coach said he always wanted that we play. I personally feel it is better to stay in a rhythm a little bit, and what better way to play against Rapid and probably get a good, good result out of there. From the jersey I'm wearing, and this is my, <laughs> I call it my Hütteldorf jersey. Uh, that's the jersey that Lask wore, minus that, uh, when they beat Rapid in the Cups semi-final in 99. That was probably, for me up until recently, the biggest Lask game. Uh, I mean, emotionally probably still, because, you know, going to Vienna, being a huge underdog and beating them in a cup semi-final, unfortunately, it didn't happen. We lost the penalties in the final. That was a huge deal, I have to say. Huge. Absolutely. Anyway, the game, Lusk exchanged four players from the first team squad to give them a rest, some of which did not even travel to Vienna and they still dominate. It was a tough game, uh, it was a rough and tough game because, you know, Lask is this um, rather nasty to play and Rapid had to make three substitutions for injuries. I mean, they made uh, two for, in for in in injuries and late on uh, they couldn't substitute in in anymore, but I have to say that at least two of those injuries were self-inflicted and the other one, yeah, was, it was unlucky, it was not because it was brutal. Uh, and a player that we just got from Rapid, and yeah, that, 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 that's the other angle to that. That a uh, very dependable player for Lusk uh, moved to Rapid, mainly um, what I think no one really understood, um, except for the fact that, you know, Rapid is a bigger club. And this week we kind of stole one of their players that wasn't playing that much. But that player already made the first game for Lask and he makes an assist against Rapid. Uh, goal Ragutz, uh, who is becoming now a most reliable striker all, all, almost. And he was uh, more or less the backup. Um, there were chances to have it even 2 0 uh, right after Rapid equalizes. And then uh, not much happening except for that injury where then Rapid needs to uh, kind of go with 10 men and Lusk makes a power play. Should have gotten a penalty and we don't have luck with penalties this, uh, these days. I mean there was a penalty, at least one penalty not, not given last weekend. Uh, then we get an absolutely ridiculous penalty against us in, uh, in, in the Champions League playoff. 
and now again a pair of at least one there was a chance for a second one too uh, that should, should, should have came so you're thinking yeah, yeah one one but you kind of cheated no 95th minute corner kick in and Aragut makes it 2-1 and that's exactly the type of win first of all 2-1 that's exactly the result that we need on Wednesday so that and then um, getting in in such a loaded atmosphere and I'm sorry I think Bruges is a big club but I don't think that they will get the atmosphere that they uh, will make so that was a huge win that definitely was a huge win uh, because you know even with a semi you know not with your first team squad you managed to beat Rapid and now we had in this season we had already two awakening games at the big uh, Vienna teams and we beat them both uh, which makes me personally very very happy because those two teams are, are, are the ones that actually I dislike almost most in Austria okay so that was that but I was not watching that as I said um, I then in my quest of restoring order at home I put on Parma Juve which was an interesting game Juve playing in their blue I think third jerseys away jerseys I don't mind them I, I um, except that why white um, I think Juve when they were blue they usually have a yellow with it so that was maybe the only the only, the, the only thing other than that I think they looked all, all, all right Parma I still for me Parma still uh, should play in white with some uh, yellow and blue accents and not with this uh, black cross on the front I know this is now when they got refounded it I just yeah well you will start it brightly but then there was a short period where Parma was coming and in exactly in that period you were strikes makes it 1-0 through Chiellini Ronaldo was actually missing chances uh, especially the one when it was already 1-0 through Chiellini where he, honestly this is a chance that he usually makes he misses it and then a few minutes later he gets his goal um, celebrating and so on only for it to be ruled or uh, chalked off for offside and I honestly I hate I hated this goal because first of all when he's attacking you you all you can see he's really looking am I offside or not and when you see the replay he's by a fraction of side his shoulder is ahead to me this is just not an offside I'm sorry this is uh, I know I don't have a, you know, I probably have a solution. I need to make a video, a, a video on offside calls because um, there is a lot in there that we have to call, consider even a uh, technical aspect to the game. So yeah, um, I hate I hated that, but you were kind of routinely plays it on a typical Juve game. You get your goal and then play it home and. Uh, it's funny because you know now Juve should be this exciting playing forward side now that they didn't show much. I mean they're they are pretty darn good squad, but no. <laughs> uh, even more fun was the evening game uh, in Italy between Fiorentina and Napoli. Again, uh, VAR taking in a way center stage uh, damningly so. Fiorentina really, I mean even playing without their two new I don't want to say big name signings because they, the players are not big anymore. Uh, I'm playing with Boateng and Ribéry, uh, but having a really good start. Chiesa being his outstanding self. Chiesa to me is the most fun player to watch in Italy. Uh, he alone is worth watching Fiorentina. If he's on, this player is amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, and I fear that yeah, he will go soon to Juve or Inter and not Milan. But this is an out. He is the future of Italy. I think he is right there in the mold of great uh, creative Italian players. So a lot of noise being made by Fiorentina. Don't take the chances though. However, then there is a very weird situation where the ball jumps onto the Napoli defenders. Arm in such a way where I cannot say this is not a 
it doesn't feel like a penalty even if you look at it in the replay I know on the new rules it's covered it is a penalty and Pulgar makes it 1-0 Napoli's new jerseys and you will see the majority I don't like it much I don't like this uh, white shoulder yoke I think that the blue is even a little bit off anyway Fiorentina really look look in the better and then it was just I think it was Kukulibali who had a couple of good chances uh, they kind of gave a spark to uh, Napoli and almost out of, out of nowhere Mertens uh, equalizes with a wonderful taking shot um, and then two minutes later an attack of Napoli and a Fiorentina defenders run, lying in the box kind of and Mertens runs to him just makes contact and then falls a uh, fall for the ages I mean, Oscar worthy, but you don't see it in the live action. In live action, you really think it's a penalty, and of course the referee gives a penalty. Then you see it in the replay, and you see how much he wants to have the penalty, and even is faking it. And that's where VAR should step in, and they didn't. And this was, this is for me, what I do not understand. Uh, this would be a situation. Yes, it's uh, called by the referee, but here you should use VAR. Let the referee have another look at this. Let him see that this was a cheated penalty. That, uh, not really, no. There was a little VAR discussion, I think, but overall it was clear that it's gonna be a penalty. And this is where you lose me, honestly. I'm a big proponent, we need VAR. Uh, I know there needs to be evidence to overturn it, but um, don't do ridiculous handballs and ridiculous offsides that no one needs. Do it for the things where we really need it, and that is such cheating or pulling. And we'll come to that again. Um, in the second half, Fiorentina gets very quickly an equalizer, but just almost in the return, Callejon gives Napoli the lead again, make it uh, 3 2. It was wonderfully uh, taken. Then um, Fiorentina equalizes again. And Napoli takes the lead again. It was a sequence, I think, of about 20, 20 minutes of absolute madness. And you really had, had, had the feeling that more is coming. Uh, there wasn't more coming except that Boateng, uh, Boateng uh, scored actually the equalizer for uh, Fiorentina, I think. Um, Boateng came on and Ribéry came on. Ribéry caused some trouble and in the end was pulled down at the edge of the box. I don't think it was in the, in, in the box, but it was pulled down on his arm. And again, VAR does not even look at it. There should have been a free kick for Fiorentina Fier 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 stoppage time. Napoli hangs on to a 4-3 win. Serie A starting with a bang, honestly. Well, I stayed with Serie A because yesterday I watched them, you know, and I would have on Saturday, on, on, honestly, when Rapid, La uh, Rapid Lask was going on, I, if I could have seen it, I would have watched uh, then uh, Liverpool Arsenal. That was a game that I really want to see. I just don't have the chance yet, so that's why you don't hear much of it. Liverpool won 3-1 and it wasn't even that close, uh, as the scoreline suggests. I mean, uh, they utterly dominated Arsenal. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> cannot say much. Also, I would have watched yesterday Pro... pro uh, I, I don't know, it was almost the same time with Milan. But Tottenham, New, Newcastle, Newcastle winning at Tottenham. Yeah, that, that was fun. Well, but as I said, I stayed with Serie A. I watched the first Milan game and boy, did I regret this. I was really buzzing yesterday after that win of Lusk and the two great Serie A games and then Milan. I could do a good, a bad and the ugly at the Serie A start. The good is there were at least two games and I haven't seen all other shots. They were just fun to watch. That was the Fiorentina Nap Napoli and that was actually Roma against Genoa, which I thought I'd watch but then, uh, in the evening, but I decided then um, to watch uh, Barcelona to see how they are doing and more on that later. But those were really, the, that was the good. The bad for me, uh, the referees and how they implement VAR. That was the bad, honestly. They lost me big time. And I really, I have been on the, I'm 
for VAR, but I don't like how it's implemented and for what it's used. It gets so nitpicky, it gets caught up in nitpicky stuff. And for the situations where we really would need it, give the referee a second look. If he says that pulling down of Ribri was not a foul, then okay, I wouldn't understand it, but at least he has looked at it. But then using it for handballs and offside calls by that much, no. That's not to my liking. Anyway, uh, Milan and Udine. The first surprise to me is that Milan played with a team that consisted of players from last year's squad. Uh, not bad per se, because I think there is something there, uh, especially the defense, but midfield, forget about it. I mean, uh, Paqueta yesterday was a non-factor, Piontek was highly unlucky, uh, John Noglu tried a lot, but uh, the all problems were there. Milan wants to play possession football, but the possession was seized to Udine all day long. Uh, they were the better team. The best thing about Milan were the jerseys, which I think are some of the best this season. Um, and what really bugs me, and bugged me already last season, uh, there's a chance for a count, counter attack, and they don't play forward, they play to the side. It's so slow. There was a, a late, late in the second half where they really could have gotten possession, could have been quick, but then they go for the safe pass. And then the entire Udine team is in their own half and Milan has to play around and cannot find a breakthrough. Of course you cannot, because you're not using speed. This slow play of Milan drives me nuts. Udine wins it after a corner kick. I think uh, the power comes on, makes a nice corner, corner, corner kick, leaves it to the head. And uh, it's 1-0. There were two VAR penalty CA situations that I both found more of the ridiculous part. I was hoping that one would go from Milan, but you know, it was not to be. Um, I'm not even sure if they had a shot, shot and goal. It was a really, really bad performance by Milan. I really have to say, say that I know Udine is kind of a really tough draw because they never play well in Udine. They can have a star team, they never play well in Udine for some reason. Um, which also means that, you know, Udine is for me the closest Serie A stadium. And I always think I shouldn't once go to Udine to watch Milan, but exactly of performances like these, I'm not. And it just drives me nuts. It really drives me nuts. Uh, and if they don't change something soon, I mean, I. The goal this year is to get in the Champions League. With performances like these, no. You have to be lucky if you make it to the Europa League, honestly. This was absolutely bad. And then, last thing I watched was yesterday Barcelona Betis. Um, I wanted to see, I mean, this is also again a Barcelona without uh, Suarez, without Messi. And without Dembele, Dembele I don't count much. Suarez, uh, and Messi, I, of course, that's the main strike force. Um, but on the other side, if you looked at the squad, there is a charisma in there. There are so many valuable players that cost a lot of money in there. The Barcelona still should have no problem against Betis, and they actually played quite well. But Fekir makes the one 0 for Betis, and then you could see how nervous Barcelona got. But at least the fans have not deserted them yet because they were still behind the team and Griezmann gets the equalizer. Griezmann even gets them after the break. The 2-1, the, the Libre, Lebron James with confetti, uh, which I thought was a little bit weird. But yeah, Griezmann gets his first two goals for Barca and really well deserved. The 3-1 was probably my favorite goal and now I don't remember who scored it from the name. Young guy with number 27, that's what, that's what I remember. Really well taken. Um, maybe it was the goalkeeper, if he sees it sooner, could have, with better positioning, could have saved it, but I really like the build up to it. Uh, Alba makes it 4 1, and Vidal makes it 5 1. And the Vidal goal, I mean, there was. It was kind of a tackle of, Greek, of, of, of Griezmann to get it to Vidal and then tackle into the. I mean, it was. 
I at first I, I, I didn't think the ball was in the net uh, because when so I was really well taken and one of those goals that this happens only once in a lifetime to get this perfect sequence uh, and then uh, Betis pulls, pulls back also with a really nice long range shot uh, make it 5-2 and while it was maybe not exciting as Roma against Gen Genoa that ended 3-3 with Roma wasting chances left and right I saw a wonderful free kick by Kol Kolarov when the Barca game was uh, well, to make it 3-2 when the Barca game was in and in, in a break. So the highlights today, I, Roma, that was a win. Uh, that they didn't win is kind of a travesty. Uh, Geno, I think, made out of four shots, three goals. But yeah, I think we will see a fun Roma side. Uh, that will have a lot of um, goals going forward and going backwards. So that might be interesting too. And yeah, uh, the, uh, the only other thing I can mention is Real Madrid. Managed only a 1-1 against Valladolid. So all the good, the good vibes at Real Madrid are already gone again. So interesting, interesting stuff. That was my weekend. As I said, I'm gonna do look a little bit closer into things. Uh, starting uh, uh, tonight or maybe tomorrow morning because I want to at least see what Inter is doing uh, to get a fuller picture and then I will yeah there's Champions League playoffs and we have to know oh, there's lots to do I definitely want to get to do a jersey review videos again uh, but we have to see when this will be the case when I will get there and I will, as I said I will probably do the both thing first Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you were watching um, this weekend. Uh, as I said, I'm a Serie A sucker. I'm so happy that the league is back. But I probably would have watched a little bit more Premier League. I would have watched the Premier League if I had the chance. This, if I had the chance, maybe, maybe, maybe. So I, don't have. I just don't want to spend 25 euros. Uh, in order to be able to watch Germany, Austria and the Premier League um, and you know, have the free choice of Champions League I can watch so much else for just 10 and then you cannot, you have to watch it right when it's on the you know, replays or whatever or uh, Paul, you cannot pull it over this is stuff that bugs me with that, uh, that 25 I'm not really just the five but you know, we are working on it I might, I might take up and I'm end, ending up take take up plunge. Anyway, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Yes, a lot of me talking. Um, hope you did enjoy it. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these or my jersey reviews or my, or my collection or as I said my weekly round roundups, which probably a little bit more fun. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.